Konnichiwa, mina bokuwa, jeremi desu, yoroshiku nagashimasu. And this is part two of my Le Mouvement Finale review because uh, it's a long musical. The musical itself isn't that long as I've discovered. It's the, there's like almost 45 minutes of after performance and talking and stuff like that, which I forgot that they usually do. So let's get right into this. So after the break, uh, Galaxia's story is kind of told. She keeps referring to everything as garbage and how she wanted to, uh, she was born on a trash planet and wanted to rule the galaxy cauldron. And uh, as she's talking this story out, she actually goes into the audience and, uh, and says it, which is actually a really neat thing to do because audience participation or even just interacting with them, breaking the fourth wall sometimes is a really, really good thing to do. Um, anyway, so Usagi remembers the inners and wonders where they are and uh, you kind of get the sense that it is kind of a dream sequence. Um, Ami, Mak Makoto, Minako appear to protect Usagi. They're all like kind of going around her. This is from the Sailor Stars TV series, that one episode that I really, really love. Uh, Rei gives Usagi a whistle, but Minako actually hands it to her um, and says that Rei will appear if you blow it, if something's up. So she blows it, and you see Rei kind of climbing up from behind on the stage. Now I have to wonder if that was actually just something that the actress decided to do because it was the last day, or if she actually would like come running in or something like that from before. Um, I don't know, I'd have to leave that to my friend Irulan because she actually went and saw it live, so it'd be interesting to hear from her about that. Um, Haruka, Michiru, Setsuna, and Hotaru all appear. They all pledge to save Usagi, and uh, she, Usagi wonders why they want to protect her so much. Is it because of the Silver Crystal? And this actually becomes a thematic thing, this, like all throughout the musical and the rest of it, too. Um, and they're like, well, no, you know, they start singing the song We Know, and it's about how loving and friendly she is and how she brought them all together and then uh, Mamoru is kind of a special chef that comes in and to cook for her he does tuxedo the smoking vangole and tuxedo uh, Tuxedom Parignon, they mention that, kind of a little funny thing, and then uh, basically Usagi brought them all together, and then Galaxia appears, and they're all calling her uh, Usagi's name, and then it gets dark and dark, and then Galaxia basically kills them again, and then you hear Chibi Chibi calling her name, and that's Chibi Chibi waking Usagi up, she wakes up in the Three Lights in Kaku's place where they're staying, um, Kaku introduces herself to Moon, uh, and asks her to save the gal, or to Usagi, sorry, and asks her to save the galaxy. Uh, Usagi really realizes again that the Ginzu issue always is the source of the fighting and the troubles, and uh, she learns about the Galaxy Cauldron from Kaku. Um, Usagi resolves not to cry anymore and wonders if Chibi Chibi is an angel, at which point Seiya vows to protect Usagi and starts singing a song, and then off on the other side, Kaku is talking to Yatin and Taiki, trying to convince them that they need to protect Usagi. She is the light of hope. Um, so Kaki manages to convince them to do so. Taiki and Yatin come down and they all pledge to protect Usagi and they decide to protect or to go to the Galaxy Cauldron. Now, Crow and Siren are then shown at the side of the Rivers of Oblivion or the River Styx, however you want to call it. Originally, this was the roles of Le Sailor Leith and Sailor Nemesine, but they kind of take on the same role and it's actually really well done. So um, uh, th this, I forgot to preface this with, this part of the musical is completely off on its own as opposed to the very first part which is kind of a rehash of the other Sailor Stars musicals. This one gets so much better it actually delves more into the story and gives us some new content which is great. Um, so anyway, Crow and Siren talk about the power of Oblivion and, and how they might be being um, or sorry, the River of Oblivion, and how they're kind of being traitors and how Galaxy may turn on them. Siren is the one that's mainly concerning Crow's trying to talk her out of it. Uh, Sailor Moon, the Starlight's Chibi, Chib or Chibi Chibi Moon and Kaku um, uh, come in and they're on a boat and then they get separated as the desert area turns into like water and uh, I, I think it's kind of fitting that Sailor si or, uh, Aluminum Siren is there as part of this because of course she controls the element of water as well. Um, Moon for, for, or begins to forget about everything, and Siren and Crow silently watch, and then they come down, and uh, all of a sudden Chibi Moon and Sailor Saturn appear around Sailor Moon, um, and Sailor or, and remind Sailor Moon who she is, and then Chibi Moon uses Pink Lady's freezing kiss, and Saturn uses the Silence Glaive surprise. Now I didn't catch this; I didn't pick up on this in the earlier part. When Galaxia was attacking the Outer Senshi, she went for Saturn and Pluto first, and then Uranus and Neptune, and there was a lot of stuff going on, so I don't think she realized that Saturn got away. Pluto actually says, Saturn, you must survive, and then Saturn's like, no, Pluto, don't, and then you hear the same sound that they used before for the, the door of time. So Saturn, Pluto was sent away by Sailor Saturn, or no, sorry, Saturn was sent away by Sailor Pluto, 
and she went to the 30th century, told Chibi Moon what was happening, and brought her back. I thought that that was really, really neat. Um, Siren stands up to Crow, kind of says that she doesn't want the fighting anymore. She's not really uh, doing this for Sailor Moon, she's not doing it for Galaxia, she just wants peace to return. She explains how her, uh, the planet Mermaid was uh, a very poor, poor planet, and uh, it was always kind of in turmoil, and she just wonders if there's a way to get peace. Crow points out that Moon causes conflict due to the Silver Crystal, again, back with that theme. Crow and Siren eventually let the Senshi go, but Galaxia appears, sees it as treason, and destroys Crow and Siren, turning them into clay dolls like she did to Mouse and Yanko. Uh, Sailor Kinmoku, well, sorry, Kakyu Princess, she never turns into her Sailor Kinmoku form, which I think is kind of sad that they didn't go there with it, but she does use her Kinmoku Fusion Tempest and is actually able to stop Sailor Galaxia's um, uh, Galactica inflation, uh, but uh, then she goes on and Kakyu talks about how her lover died right in front of her, and um, it's very similar to the story of Usagi seeing Mamoru die right in front of her, but kind of forgetting it, but Kaki remembers, obviously. Um, Galaxia uh, then attacks. Kinmoku is able to, or Kaku, sorry, is able to stop it for a moment, but then Galactica Inflation overpowers her, and she basically ends Kaku and takes her star seed, and Kaku tells the star starlights they need to protect Sailor Moon. So, um, the starlights are like, okay, uh... You need to go ahead, Saturn, you find the crystals, and take the others, and we'll take care of this. This is our battle. So they stand up to Galaxia, and they use their powers together, all three of them. So, uh, Gentle Uterus, uh, Sensitive Inferno, and then Star Sirius Laser. And because Galaxia is holding two of them at bay, she gets hit by the other one, and then kind of gets toppled over. And they think they've got her, but... Then she gets back up, and ultimately she kills them and takes their star seeds. Now this is different from the manga because it's the starlights that die first, and then Kaku dies later by being impaled by Sailor Kai or Phi, one of the two of them, in the uh, the star seed gardens. But of course they're not in this one, and they change the story a little bit to work with it. Um, so it in this sense it's similar to the previous stars musicals where Kaku always dies first, and also in the, the anime as well. So, uh, all of a sudden, Tuxedo Command and the Senshi appear, but they are all under Galaxia's power. Tuxedo Command leads them and destroys, er, to destroy Sailor Moon and the others, um, because I guess Galaxia realizes, well, hey, this is the best way to get to Sailor Moon, because she's not going to want to fight, and blah, blah, blah. Um, Saturn is able to stop Pluto's Kronos Typhoon with the Silent Wall, and she demands that Sailor Moon get up and fight, but Sailor Moon doesn't want to, of course, because she thinks that these are her friends and that she can help them, but, of course, they're not her actual friends, they're just creations of Galaxias um, using the star, the Sailor Crystal star seeds to recreate them and have them run her way. Tuxedo Command is like kissing Galaxia's hand and the whole works. Um, Galaxia ends up taking Sailor Saturn's star seed, uh, Sailor Crystal, because Sailor Moon doesn't do anything, doesn't attack her. Uh, Chibi Chibi stops Sailor Chibi Moon from interfering in the battle. Now, Mamoru tells Yusagi to uh, believe in herself and fight and not give up. This is just before Tuxedo Command is going to attack Sailor Moon with the Senshi around. Um, and then Sailor Moon realizes, she's like, okay, I can do this, I can do this. And then she turns into Eternal Sailor Moon. Um, and uses Silver Moon Crystal Power Therapy Kiss, gets rid of the evil copies, and then Galaxia and Sailor Moon are left to kind of face off with each other. Sailor Moon releases the radiance of everyone's belief in her, which then causes the Silver Crystal to lighten up. Uh, it affects Galaxia, and Galaxia kind of runs off, and, and then they end up in the Galaxy Cauldron area. Now, I really liked how they did this. They had the the one part of the stage that was movable, and Sailor Moon's on it, and Galaxia's on the other part, and, and it's just, it's all over the place, and then Galaxia joins Sailor Moon, and they're kind of turning in, and just, it looks really, really neat. Um, so, uh, Galaxia brings them to the Galaxy Cauldron, where all life begins and is lost. Uh, Galaxia melts the Sailor Crystals into the cauldron, and uh, basically wants to play on Sailor Moon's hatred for her so that it'll awaken her true power. Galaxia offers Sailor Moon and her awakened power as a sacrifice uh, as she's overflowing with the power. Chaos tells Sailor Moon that she has slain her siblings, which, uh, of course, then goes through Beryl and to Neherenia and so on up until now. Galaxia is hit by Chaos for her treachery, and this is kind of where things get a little bit weird. It's, it's all of a sudden Galaxia is powerless. But, and she's just pissed off in general that it was Sailor Moon that was cho chosen to have this power and not her. Well, Chaos basically 
I assume, wants Sailor Moon to go into the cauldron with him so that he can basically rule the universe with her power. Um, so Sailor Moon will become the perfect ruler of the cauldron with chaos. Galaxia wonders why Sailor Moon saved her, and Sailor Moon uh, says that she saw her own loneliness in Galaxia. Sailor Moon always fought, fought for her loved ones and friends, not actually for peace and justice, and Galaxia obviously can't fight either and thinks that everything is, is doomed and that there won't actually be a Sailor Senshi left at all in the world or in the universe. Chibi Chibi thinks that destroying everything is the only way to stop the fighting, and Sailor Moon says she can't destroy the cauldron as it's where all life um, comes from. She realizes good and bad come from the same place. Galaxia really realizes how grand Sailor Moon is and then suddenly just disappears, realizing Sailor Moon will shoulder everything and the burden on herself. It, it's it's weird. It, I don't know if she jumps in the cauldron or, or what the hell. She just kind of just disappears. It's almost like, it's almost as bad as when they fought the door. And, and if you want to see what I'm talking about, look at the other Sailor Stars musicals. They end up fighting a door in almost every single one of them. It's It's, it's weird. <laughs> Chibi Chibi turns into Cosmos, who has a moment with Sailor Moon, and they realize that um, she made the right decision uh, in the first place. So she came back to try to make Sailor Moon or her past self um, destroy everything, but then she realizes in that moment that actually she made the right decision, and so she just lets the events happen. Now, a screen drops, and of course we start to see Chaos's form. It's got that neat light effect. Uh, Chaos pledges to use Sailor Moon's power to rebirth himself as the strongest star in the galaxy. Sailor Moon talks about Metalia, Death Phantom, Pharaoh 19, Neherenia, Galaxia, and Chaos, all wanting Sailor Moon's power because they all shared her feelings of wanting to find friends and loved ones, and they all wanted to be one because that's what they started out as. So she decides, okay, I'll give you that, then we'll, we'll come together. And then her body starts being torn apart. Um, the Senshi start to talk to her in, in telling her that to never give up and that they're always with her and that she's not doing this alone. She has them no matter what and uh, encouraging her to, that they will always be together. Sailor Moon calls for their collective power, and you see the Sailor Crystals appear, and each of the Senshi says their, their name, and, you know, uh, Senshi of Wisdom, Sailor Mercury, Soldier of Passion, Sailor Mars, and so on. Uh, the Sailor Crystals appear, and their powers combine, and music of the spheres plays. All of the Sailor Senshi appear, and they all perform and fight together. Uh, Sailor Moon calls from all of the Sailor Senshi power from all over the galaxy to help her. She uses Silver Moon Crystal Eternal Power and Chaos is hit and the crystals that were melted in the cauldron regain their shape and return to their world. So basically they disappear, Sailor Moon and the Senshi, and it's just Cosmos and Chibi Moon left. And Chibi Moon is wondering what's going on, so Sailor Cosmos tells her what's going on. She explains that she's Sailor Moon's future self after being reborn countless times, a future even more distant than the 30th century. Cosmos explains that she was a coward who ran away from where she was supposed to be, and then explains Sailor Moon and the others will be reborn someday, and they will, will, um, they're probably riding the light on their way home. Sailor Moon collapsed Chaos into the cauldron, but couldn't fully dis destroy Chaos, and it goes like in the anime, where Chaos will live on in everyone's hearts. She can't really have the light without the dark, and it's just going to keep repeating and repeating. But as long as they have each other, and so on, then it's fine. Chibi Moon and Cosmos then watch the princesses dance and comment on how they're alive. Mamoru appears and he and Usagi reunite. They sing a song, We've... Or... We've... I can't remember. I can't read my own writing. We become one again. That's what it is. Starlight's Khaki Galaxia and the anima mates all appear and they all sing together and then they all end up leaving. So the Starlights and Khaki go to their place. Galaxia and the anima mates all head back to their respective areas. Mamoru tells Usagi to, that he wants to marry her when they get back to Earth. Cosmos tells Chibi Moon that she won't run anymore and then resolves to return to the battlefield but will accompany Chibi Moon back to the future as far as the 30th century and then will leave. And then everything fades to black. We hear wedding bells. Mamoru and Usagi in the tux and wedding dress. Usagi feels pregnant, <laughs> basically is what it is. She feels a star inside of her so she's just basically telling that she's pregnant. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, the inners and the outers appear wearing wedding attire as well. Uh, Usagi does the bouquet toss. Rei catches it, and Satsuna, Satsuna's really upset, and I think it's she overplayed it, because um, at, at this point, Mamoru is talking to the crowd, doing like a monologue about how everyone will always die, but Sailor Moon will stay beautiful forever. And uh, in the background, you have Satsuna, she's all upset, and then Minako's trying to help her out, and then Rei gives her the, the uh, bouquet, and it's, it's just kind of a funny moment. And then it fades to black. And then we see scenes appearing from each of the 2013 to 2016 musicals. So La, La Reconquista, Petite Étrangère, Un Nouveau Voyage, and um, Amour Eternal. 
And then, uh, now of course, Le Mouvement Final, we just watched. And then it says the end, and it's really quite sad. And then you get a whole bunch of just musical numbers, On the Scene, Tuxedo Command, Koi Sudo Satellite, Speed of Light, and then a solo of When Destiny Calls, uh, with Yuga Yamato dressed as King Endymion. Aino Star Shine, including the starlights in it, Moonlight and Setsu, which is the entire cast, and then um, the actresses actually go out into the audience, the inner and outer sense you do. Uh, and then we have a reprise instrumental as the cast takes their bow, and then one by one they all do their, their farewells and stuff. Yuga Yamato announces that it is the end of their roles in it, um, so it's kind of an official I'm graduating type thing. Uh, but the actress for Yatin says she's not sure if the production is over or not, so that's kind of interesting. I wonder if there is going to be any um, truth to the rumors of the Stars musical going to North America. That would be wonderful. Um, or just continuing on with new stories. That would be great, too. Yugi Mato announces it. Um, and then, of course, the actress who played Taiki also was Rubius and Hawkeye, so that was kind of neat. And they all got a standing ovation. Now, I have to say that the little actress, the youngest one who played Chibi Chibi, is fucking adorable. Oh, my God. And when the other Chibi Chibi was trying to talk and she was crying, the little one kept coming over and, like, patting her arm. It was adorable. It was the cutest thing ever. And then, of course, uh, Mishi, uh, Sailor, Sailor Pluto, she just bawling again. They're all, you know, they're all kind of crying and stuff. Um, the one that I found the oddest was Coco, uh, Sailor Galaxia, because she just seems so weird. Like, she does this strange goodbye, which was kind of funny, like, half in character of Galaxia, half not. But then, just at the end, everybody's like this, and she's just kind of sitting there like... Like, I don't know. She just... She's just weird to me, but it was still... It was still a wonderful, wonderful show, and, um... I will say that my initial worry about it from watching the first part of it, uh, I shouldn't have been worried because it was actually really neat that they did that, that they went and rehashed it all and then come back to uh, kind of more originality using the source material and um, deviating a little bit here and there just so that they could make the story work, not having Leith and Nemesine and Kai and Phi, but I still think they should have been there. Heavy Metal Papillon, you know, but uh, it, was, it was a very, very well done story. Um, I really hope it's not the final end. I'd love to see more of the musicals. Um, I'd love to see them do a world tour type thing. I don't know if it would be the same actresses. I don't know if they would go back to bringing male and females in like they did the original musical runs of 1993 to 2005. Um, it, it just Who knows what's going to happen. Maybe there would be casts in each country that could do it. I don't know if Viz Media, since they're the license holder of Sailor Moon in North America, it'd be neat if they did got the license to reproduce the musicals and maybe do them here but i know some people especially purists would be really upset with that because they would all be in english and there'd be all sorts of things i don't know how it would work but i i really hope that we'll see the musicals in some incarnation again sometime maybe in the 30th anniversary uh maybe they're going to continue on next year who knows but uh i was really really glad that they did this one. This one is definitely the best, probably, out of the five that we just saw from 2013 to 2017, um, it, at least in my personal opinion, but I also, uh, I'm a little biased. I love Sailor Stars. Um, and just all of the feels and everything, and Satomi Moon, of course, coming back and talking about how she was Sailor Moon and then got to play Sailor Cosmos, and it was just it was wonderful. Like it hit all of the right parts, all the all the feels everywhere. I really wish that Uranus and Neptune would have done Eye of the Storm as like a you know one of the last songs, uh, additional bonus songs. But that's okay. It was still great, and uh, I guess we'll see what happens in the future. The one song, of course, that ties everything together from the past musicals in this one is Moonlight and Setsu. I did find it strange that La Soldier wasn't used, but maybe it's because La Soldier was used so much in the original one. It was in almost every single musical except. Er, like as the last battle song or the final song that they would do except I think Shinden Setsukuren maybe I don't I think it was that one but I don't know there's so many so many things that I loved about it and uh anyway that is about it for this and uh, let me know what you guys thought about the musical and if you didn't get to see my part one you can check it out I'll probably put the link in the description below um but what do you think of the musicals if you got a chance to watch them uh, and what, who was your favorite actress in the role, what was your favorite storyline, what season did you like the best, and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Jamatane!